Hello, this is Chelsea filming for VETT 222, task 8, which is performing a heartworm test by the modified knots technique. So, um, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and show you the sample and our supplies that we have collected here. So, we have our tray of supplies. So, we have some 2% formalin solution, properly labeled in a secondary container. We have some new methylene blue here to stain it. We have some cover glass for our microscope slide. We have a microscope slide. We have a 15 ml centrifuge vial, and we have one ml um, of anticoagulated EDTA uh, blood here for patient um, Emma Jean. So we're going to go ahead and try and figure this out. So we're going to go ahead and put 10 mls, let's see, 10 mls is right up to here, 10 mls of the 2% formalin solution into our centrifuge tube. And then we're going to transfer 1 ml using our transfer pipette. So all the way up to that 1 ml marker here. Transfer 1 ml into that solution. Okay, recap. So we have our blood here and mixing with the 2% formalin, uh, which is going to lyse those red blood cells and make it easier for us to see any microfilaria. So we're going to go ahead and go over here to the centrifuge. Take a little trip here. Here we go. Okay, so we're over here at our centrifuge now. Um, we're going to be using um, a counterbalance. So we have our counterbalance here. It's not quite right, so we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of water to that and show you. So here we are, equal. We're going to place them, enter the centrifuge, and make sure that's locked. Um, our manufacturer's recommendations um, recommend about five minutes um, at about 1,000 to 1,500 RPMs. So we're going to go ahead and turn that to uh, 1,500, which is kind of where it's been at because I've been running fecal. So I'm going to turn on the power, make sure everything's secure here, and turn it on for about five minutes. And we will come back and we will read that sample as soon as it's done. It's just finished centrifuging our um, sample. We're going to go ahead and decant the supernin. So we're going to toss that out. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and take one drop of our new methylene blue here and add that to our sample. And then we're going to use the pipette here to mix the sample really well. And then we're going to place one drop of that sample onto our slide here. So I'm going to zoom in. Okay. So we're going to place one drop of the mixture on the slide. Perfect. And place a slip cover over that. And we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what we find. I'm going to place it on the microscope stage here and take a look. So we're going to start on the highest setting here, or lowest setting, I'm sorry, and take a look. Once it's nice and um, focused in, there we go. We can go ahead and move to the 10x. And on the 10x, we are looking for microfilaria. So with the red blood cells lysed, the microfilaria are going to appear as a stiff, fixed little worm there. And the same way we look at any a differential or a fecal or any blood film, we're just going in that battlement um, technique, going back and forth really methodically checking everywhere to be sure that we didn't miss one spot. So here in Oregon, where I live, we do not have a lot of heartworm positive canines and very rarely a heartworm positive feline, um, like maybe one in a million here. So I know all of you guys in the South, you're going to see a lot more than me. Um, we've only ever had one heartworm positive dog here. so. Not expecting to see any, but we're still checking it out. So finishing up here, 
and I am not seeing any microfilaria, which is good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call this microfilaria negative, and we're going to kind of talk about a common problem with um, looking for microfilaria, uh, dirofilaria on the heartworm tests here. I'm going to zoom back out. We're going to discuss that for a second. So um, I'm going to show you this picture here. So the top one here is a common parasite called Dipolotonema ricondidum. So that is actually a fairly common um, parasite transmitted by fleas that can have that first stage um, microfilaria kind of just living in the bloodstream. So this is the one that's um, of less importance, but still important. But the one at the bottom here is your dirofilaria imidis, which is your microfilaria um, for heartworm. So um, to tell the difference here, the dirofilaria is thicker. It's also tapered at the end. So it comes down to a taper on this end here. Um, so the head is what you want to look at here. So the head of this one is tapered and the head of this one is blunted. So that's one way to tell them apart. Um, the clarity of the cellularity here um, on the anterior end, so this one's clear, um, the heartworm, and this one has cellular debris down, or cellular material down at the bottom. So um, it can also have a little hook to the end of the um, dipolitonema. So um, that one can actually have a little hook right here that you can see on microscopic exams.